Today, is the next B2B platform going to be TikTok? The brilliant Facebook ad campaign that Facebook is not happy about. YouTube fills a long-standing gap in its analytics. And another industry lands on Google's naughty list. It's Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. Happy International Nurses Day. I'm Todd Maffin from Engage Q Digital, and here's what you missed today in digital marketing. The average job tenure for chief marketing officers at large organizations fell last year to the shortest it's been in more than a decade. The study from Spencer Stewart looked at CMOs at 100 of the most advertised U.S. brands last year. The average tenure, about three and a half years, just 40 months. That's the lowest it's been since 2009. I know, I know, averages and medians are different, so if you care about the median, that was 25 and a half months. Today's premium newsletter has the full data set going back to 2004. On the diversity landscape, good news and bad news. First, 47% of CMOs in the study were women last year. That's up from 43% in 2019 and just 36% the year prior. But when looking at ethnic diversity, only 13% of CMOs were people of color. That's actually down one point from 2019. So this was Pure Genius. The Signal app, which competes with Facebook's WhatsApp, tried to run ads on Facebook and Instagram, ads that Facebook quickly denied. But the campaigns weren't denied because of the brand. Instead, it was about the ad and the ad targeting. Signal created a bunch of very niche audiences using Facebook's tools and then directly called out those attributes in the ads. For instance, one read, quote, you got this ad because you're a teacher, but more importantly, you're a Leo and single. This ad used your location to see you're in Moscow. You like to support sketch comedy, and this ad thinks you do drag, unquote. The ads are, of course, a huge violation of Facebook's ads policy about not calling out targeting attributes in the ad text. You can't, for instance, target women who are romantically interested in women and say, hey, lesbian. Obviously, this wasn't about getting the ads out there. It was a stunt to highlight the amount of data that Facebook collects on its users. For its part, a Facebook spokesperson said, This is a stunt by Signal, who never even actually tried to run these ads, and we didn't shut down their ad account for trying to do so. Unquote. And then, it devolved into a highly entertaining pissing match on Twitter. <laughs> Signal replied with a screenshot of an ad account showing it had been banned. Then the Facebook spokesperson jumped into the fray with his own personal Twitter account, I might add, saying, no, no, that's, that's a screenshot from March when you had payment issues. Signal, by the way, is funded by Brian Acton, the fellow who sold WhatsApp to Facebook for $22 billion. TikTok continues to try to move into the B2B space. Axios is reporting that they're testing a new employee recruitment tool that would let brands hire people right on the platform and promote their workplace culture to potential candidates. Apparently, early versions of this are sort of like a landing page where potential employees tap a call to action button and then are taken to a web page, still in the app, where they can apply. And if that seems like a peculiar alignment, the Washington Post says it shouldn't. Quoting them, TikTok is fast emerging as a force in the job search ecosystem. At a time when unemployment remains high, a new generation looks for their first jobs and pandemic isolation leads to hours of mindless scrolling, unquote. A recent survey from Skynova recently found that TikTok is the one social media platform that brands want to get into the most. TikTok says videos using the hashtag career advice are seen more than 80 million times a day. Still with TikTok for a moment, they, like all the platforms, are racing to put e-commerce hooks directly into the app. And now, a report from Bloomberg says they may actually be making more headway than they're letting on. Apparently, they are testing having product thumbnails right on the profiles of some European businesses. For its part, TikTok gave the standard, we are always exploring new ways to serve our users, blah, blah, blah. One thing is clear. TikTok is moving very carefully to get this right. They've been working on e-commerce integration for more than a year now. The early tests were tags on videos you could tap to be taken to a product listing inside the app. Since that test, they've tried live-streamed shopping events and partnered with Shopify for an ad product that pulls products out of a catalog and runs them as an interstitial. And 
To be fair, it's not like they're keeping all this under wraps. Earlier this year, they previewed new ad products like promo tiles, which will let you add customizable sales alerts on top of your videos, and a deeper integrated version called Showcase Tiles. Last TikTok story for the day, not directly a digital marketing story, but I thought I'd mention it as well. If you're on TikTok, you'll know know this this voice. voice. It's the text-to-speech voice that the app uses in North America. The person behind the voice is a Canadian voice actor actor named named Beth Beth Standing. Standing. Back in 2018, she was hired by the Chinese Institute of Acoustics, a government-backed research body, and she recorded about 10,000 sentences to be used in translations. Then, somehow, ByteDance got the data... And now she's suing, saying her voice is being used to say foul and offensive things, causing her reputation, quote, irreparable harm. I've got a question for you. How many of you hate Google Analytics? I bet a lot of you raised your hand. I'm one of you. So you probably want to hear that now there's a better way to analyze your website and get actionable insights. Meet Oribi. Oribi is a unique marketing analysis tool. It captures all the events visitors perform on your website without using code. It enables you to analyze behavior patterns, build smart funnels, and get tons of actionable insights. Finally, you'll be able to understand your visitors and know what to change in order to convert more. No more blind spots. Start your free trial. Go to oribi.io. That's O-R-I-B-I dot I-O. YouTube is filling a gap in its analytics platform, Community Posts. These are like short blog posts you can add to your channel, mostly meant for subscribers to see. They can contain polls and images. But until now, there hasn't really been any way to find out how well they performed. Now, you'll be able to see impression and engagement rates. This is only on desktop for now. They're working on bringing it to the YouTube Studio mobile app soon. Also, they're letting you add multiple images now, up to five in a single post, This was apparently one of the top requests from the community. For now, that's only available on Android, desktop and iOS coming later in the year. And finally, iOS users will be able to schedule community posts that was already available on desktop and Android. All YouTube accounts with 1,000 subscribers or more can publish community posts. YouTube also says it's joining the Creator Fund party. In case this is new to you, many social platforms have started these funds, basically pools of money that get divided up between creators in the program, usually allocated based on view count. Some platforms, like Pinterest, are using it to encourage people of color to participate on the platform. Others, like TikTok, use it as a kind of stopgap until there's more reliable monetization options. Anyway, YouTube's fund will be $100 million and will go to people who make YouTube shorts. That's their TikTok clone. Like TikTok, they're using this as a stopgap, since shorts are monetized right now. As a result, many creators haven't put a lot of time or effort into making them. But unlike TikTok's fund, you won't need to be accepted into any kind of creator fund program. If you've got enough engagement and views on a short, YouTube says it'll reach out to people, money in hand. They say they expect that money will stretch to thousands of creators each month. That fund should start in a month or two. And finally, Google Ads has added another vertical to its naughty list. Now, cell and gene therapies will no longer be allowed to advertise on the Google Ad Network. This includes stem cell therapy, platelet-rich plasma, and other types of regenerative medicine. Did you know you can get this podcast as a daily email newsletter, too, complete with images, related videos, links to dive deeper, and even newsletter-exclusive content? There's a free tier as well. You get an issue every Friday. The newsletter comes out about an hour before the podcast drops. Just go to todayindigital.com slash newsletter to sign up or tap the link in this episode's notes. All right, that's it for today. Talk to you tomorrow. Cause I was an ass before I left Get rid of my antics Let's skip over semantics I don't know all the answers Didn't know who myself was Till I started asking Didn't know what I felt But I knew I was lacking Yeah, I knew I had passion Didn't know if it mattered Addicted to bad habits Like not loving myself And not considering factors The end of the beginning Should've come a bit faster Now it's all that I'm after Yeah, I had the flex Really had to work it out Yeah, I took a break When you're sick, every minute counts. 
So don't go anywhere. Go to DispatchHealth.com where high-quality medical care comes directly to you. No getting out of a sick bed. No crazy driving to an emergency room. No endless paperwork. No hospital waiting rooms. Visit DispatchHealth.com to learn about our medical professionals, then make house calls. Dispatch Health is covered by Medicare and most major insurance. Go to DispatchHealth.com.